if you take the situation, how he ended up working with the Steiners. Ole Anderson came in the book uh, up at WCW, and we were working in Florida and going back to, to Charlotte with George Scott, who we opened the NWA. We were going back and forth. And Gene Anderson, one of the you know uh, wrestlers, one of the Anderson brothers, was up there with uh, Lou Thez, Johnny Walker, uh, Paul Jones, the manager, a lot of old timers. And George Scott was an old time because he was a big, huge Johnny Valentine fan. That and Greg's the one that told us, "Hey, go up there to work." So Ole sets out and goes. And he went on a round and he pulled. He went to Florida. He came, so Gene told him about us, but he came to Florida and watched us work at the Sportatorium live. After that, he asked us to come up would you, for, to, 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 to do a television. For, said, sure. And then, then he pulled in at the same time Art Barr from Portland and uh, a, guy, a kid named J.W. Storm and uh, I think two other, two other, another team, somebody else, I forgot who they were, in the WCW. So that was a class of champions. So G, no, Gene Anderson, we get in his old car and it's leaking gas, no air conditioning, <laughs> he had a little fan up in the corner. Old Gene drives us from Charlotte down to to, to Asheville, and class that, of the that clashes. And we go, "You're wrestling Clash of the Champions." We're like, "Now, if you're not ready for that," and here do we get Terry Taylor and Bobby Fulton, two great workers, and Terry Taylor's a great guy, and Terry had buzzed. Sean, you know, you know, talk to Sean Michaels about us, and then you know, Sean, with all the, they they were brought up, you know, broke in with us in the AWA, and so Terry, they took care of us in a way. we and we we just we gave it our all, but having them two guys work with us, not against us, really helped us. Right, and it was just a match, but it felt great. We were doing that. Terry was doing the double uh, thing where we everything was perfectly built. We we had our shit down as a team. Yeah. And then we came in, Ole asked to come in, just a, uh, on a, a nightly guarantee. And it came around, you know, these guys, I'm going to throw these, this might be good to throw these guys to the Steiners, because the Steiners are maniacs at the time. Well, you know what I mean? I'm gonna, are, I got to interrupt Wait, wait, well, no, wait a second. <laughs> that one, this is about how it, the, the ball was handed. Okay. And there was no plans or thing. It said, we're going to be wrestling these guys or anything. We got to Chicago. And we weren't wrestling any, just wrestling this team, that team, uh, Tracy Smothers and them, uh, other guys. That we were, and we get to Chicago. Ole Anderson goes, you two, go out right now and do a live interview to Chicago. Now, okay, and they sold out the pavilion downtown. Me and him go out there and I go, what the fuck? You know, if you're not ready for that, you shit, you shit the bed and you're blah, blah, blah. I go... You South Side pieces of shit. <laughs> We're from New York City, and the, the, the place erupts. And we do a cut it interview and tore the thing down and come out and go, how the hell did that just happen? You know what I mean? So now right. Holy goes. Now, all right, now, now, if we wouldn't have made that interview work, he don't go to the next step. Now he goes. He comes and thinks about it. now. Okay, that you got over, and that got over. So he. This is what he must have been thinking in his head. Comes make about twenty minutes, a half hour later. We're going to do a signing for Halloween Havoc, a, a tag team titles match signing with you and the Steiners. Table like this in the middle of the ring. He goes, you know, the belts will be there, you know, talk, you know, mix it up, you know, like they do for when the boxers meet. And there's, you know, just you, you, so we can do whatever we want. Yeah, mix it up a little bit. So we, do, we told so me, me and him take full advantage of this. And that's we did the contract signing. We went... Oh, we, they signed, we signed. Me and him picked the belts up, and the Steiners didn't even know that it was maybe we'll you know do something to you. They didn't really know nothing about it. I took the, we looked the belts. I took that belt, and I hit Ricky as hard as I could straight in the face with it. Boom! Cut his cut his head open, and we blasted and Scotty, knocked him over the table, flies. We dumped Ricky out, and we bubbled. And it was like a blazing maniac fight, but it exploded. And that's what led into the match at Halloween Havoc, which excel us to the next level. Not only did it end there, then Ole says, we get back. After the match at Halloween Havoc now, we, which we tore the house down, the best match of the night. That, that put us to the next level to get, get to go to WWE. We get back. Now, I, now Rick, Ricky gets me back on a chair on my back with the top of the chair. Give me like a two-inch laceration in the back of my head, and I don't keep. I had 
hundreds of stitches in my face and head. I don't give a shit about that. So there was blood when I when I actually had Scotty in the uh, Boston Crab. It was down. It was, the blood was pouring over the top of my head down and down my back. And so we get to the back and goes, okay. They're all well, that, the match got over so big. Well, he goes, we're gonna we're gonna keep this going. We're, now we're gonna do. You're gonna do. Put this. I, I go what. He goes, put this hat on and this beard. <laughs> I go, what? <laughs> I, and, and he gives me an apron and hands me a tray with popcorn in it. Right. Okay, when Scotty Steiner is going to be doing an interview with Eric Bischoff, because you guys just knocked, we, we double post at Ricky to keep the heat. And all he goes, you're going to be the popcorn vendor. I go, well, my head's bleeding. I will take care of that later. Just he sticks the fucking <laughs> beard on me in the hat. And all, this Scotty's <laughs> going, you nasty boy. And here's Bischoff's doing an interview with me. And I'm in the background, popcorn, popcorn. <laughs> and then, and all, who did, the next thing I, I, I look like this, and they're, they're talking to the camera, and they're, they're facing, I'm in the back, and here I come with the popcorn. I had a board in the tray, a piece of plywood inside the plastic tray, and blam, nailed them, and here comes Niles. And we beat the living shit. That, that stuff, that's always just one step after the other. Right. Total ab lib. Nothing. I mean, so if you're not, we weren't ready for that interview. At that point in time of our life, we go out and shit the bed. We had five years. It never goes right to now. the next step. Five years in the business. We went to territories like Tennessee, South Atlantic. We did all the small territories. So in them five years, we learned. So we were ready when they gave us a shot. But now I got to go back. And you know, the SAG wants to do the whole interview by himself because uh, I wanted to throw a couple of things in there. <laughs> the, the first thing came before he came with Oli and all that. Right. Is nobody wanted to wrestle the Steiners. They were hurting people. They were throwing them around. Not he really hurt. Play. hurt not, not injuring them. Not but, injuring but it, them. It was, still in, it was still in the era of, you know, wrist lock. Can and I that talk for a minute? Right. They, weren't, they weren't like crippling people. So but they were that. throwing them around, suplexes, and <laughs> they, were hurt, they were hurting some of the wrestlers. And nobody wanted to wrestle them. And they went to us and said, would you guys like to wrestle the Steiners? And they told us straight out. You know, a lot of people don't want to work with them. They've been hurting people, this and that. And we went... Hell yeah, we'll work with them. You know, we're, we're barroom <laughs> we fighters. We hurt people too. Yeah, we're barroom <laughs> fighters from Allentown, and we got trained by Brad Reagans, and Ricky got trained by Brad Reagans. So there, it, it came, and we, we, we meshed like glue, and we became the best of friends. You know, and that's how kind of that well, started. You talk about the, ter- then, like the territory thing. Minneapolis, Vern Gagne was a loved amateur wrestlers and shooting well, so we, we were the, taught it was one of the big territories we were taught right. almost a ja- japanese Texas, a, a japanese NWA a, a, and a, Vince. a yeah. stiff and japanese a realistic style of wrestling at, out of minneapolis so that's what that's what that, that that's that style of wrestling that we were taught it's they insane. they knew that we didn't give a, a goddamn we didn't give a shit well, we were and every, fighters. you know it, it, it's very yeah. hard that with their amateur gimmick and all the suplexes they like to do, like I'm saying, to go wrestle them, like, you know, you know, like the, uh, not, well, wait I, a minute, I love the I, Midnight, I love like the, the, min, the Midnight Express. <laughs> They're going to throw you, though. There's no stopping it. I don't give a no, shit if you're, you're you know, if, nah. <laughs> they knew what the hell they were doing. NCAA Michigan, if they wanted to suplex you, they're suplexing you, whether you like it or not. I'm, right. saying, I'm saying, look at the tag teams at the time that were in the early WCW there. You know, like, say if you took Robert and Ricky, that's like working with Sean and Marty. It's a night yeah. off, the great greatest workers on earth. But the style of them, the, their style against the, the amateur Steiner type style, getting them suplexed off the top rope and stuff, it just doesn't jive. And those guys are like, right. what the, this is crazy. We ain't doing this this stuff. Or the Midnight Express, but, or even Michael Hayes and them guys, or anybody like that. They, 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 not only probably they couldn't do it, but wouldn't. You know what I mean? Where we would just do, we want, are we going to do that? Okay. You know, they, 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 yeah. one, one time he, that, that finish, he took that Frankenstein, or I thought he broke his neck. Mm. It, you know, you know yeah, that great. He, they, right. We're, listen, you know. we're at the time he's three twenty. I'm close to three hundred pounds, six four, and I'm coming off the uh, getting suplex from the top into the middle of the ring. Any uh, or on, uh, uh, on I'm on Scotty's shoulders like animal and hog steel, but Ricky would jump off the top rope and bulldog me. You know, but we would just run with anything. We didn't care. So, uh, uh, Terry Taylor, we called and said, listen. 
Vince McMahon called us and his contracts here. What do you do? He goes, he's the only one of the only guys that didn't say, stay here, take money. He goes, if Vince McMahon's calling you and giving you an opportunity, go. Yeah, but. And then we 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 said you know we said so I was on the phone it. with Vince though, and I said uh, they offered us this guaranteed, and he says I don't give out guaranteed contract. It's a no money co contract, but I guarantee you on my word that you'll make three times more than what they guaranteed you, hmm. and that's all he had to say. And I said yes, sir. I said uh, we're in, you know. And then we went back to WCW and said. We're going to leave, and that's when Jim Hurd came up with the contract, tried to get us to stay, and then they had us in the yeah, last well, match uh, where they wanted Steiners to beat us. We were in a room. And he was, he we was, he was mad, and, Jim and then Ross. Jim Ross, and then, they, and then Jim Ross actually went to the Steiners and said, hey, get these guys and, and, and pin them, you know, stretch them and pin them for real. And Scotty and Ricky both stuck on our side and said, no, man. We liked them guys, and they did everything we ever wanted to do. And the Steiner stuck up for us. Wow. Because we yeah. had it as a DQ, and Ross and Jim Hurd wanted us to get beat before we go up to Vince. Right. And it did. It, it stayed as a DQ because the Steiners were on our side. Yeah. Said, hey, man, that's their choice, but we're not going to do that to them. They're good that guys. They, They're good they friends. Were, at that time, they were really mad at it. And that after, yeah. I think then... Not we, the Steiners, but the office was. Um, right. We went in right at the same time. I think Taker went in maybe a week no, ago. No, it was me, you, and uh, the Taker. Us and me, him, and Undertaker. We went at the was, same time. Same time. Yep. And then a little bit after that, while we were there, here came Rick left. Flair. Right. Came left of the came yeah. with us.